months, at Tobruk in 1941, 15,000 Australians and 8,000 British and Indian troops held a German army seven times their number and in seven times their armour. The Germans, understanding machines, but not these men, flung an insult to them in a name, the Rats of Tobruk. This insult they carried on their bayonets right into the ranks of the oncoming German hordes. It has become one of the finest epitaphs of the war. To these men, who could never be driven from their firing posts before Rommel, we pay homage, the Rats of Tobruk. This was the land they left to fight for, a land of hill and plain and rivers running free, receiving the stumbling herd in cool waters, where the quiet air cracks to the stock whips and the cattle cries. Peter Linton, a young English writer, came to study this peaceful land, won by conquering people, toughened by adversity, to catch their adventure, share their comradeship, and to join in their song. cattle droving, Peter Linton met many men. Not the least among them, this man, Louis Donkin, the boss drover, a tough two-fisted friend to have around in a fight, a man who discouraged favours because he asked for none. This man makes up the trio. Milo Trent, dingo hunter and cattleman, good-natured and easy-going. They made a strange trio, these men, the nature of which is not lost on Peter Linton as he takes out his diary. Somehow, he felt that their destinies were linked together, that he was already part of their life. What were the words of that poem you said to us the other night? Which one? You know, the one about uh, our foes and stock rows. And, and we swear by the dead who bore us and the heroes who blazed the trail. No foe will gather our harvest or sit on our stockyard rail. That's it. Aussie poet, Pete. Mm -hmm. And now, what's the strong of all this scribbling of yours? Oh, nothing much. Just a story about cattle and mud and you fellas. Us? Go on out. Yes, I'm collecting things. Some of those words of yours, they're terrific. Billabong, Mongo, Kulaba, Gigi. <laughs> There's poetry in those, you know. Yeah? Hi, Bill. Hi, uh, Bill. How do you get on? Not much luck. I've been out in the lead for miles. The country's as dry as a bone. Not enough water to bathe a hummingbird. Uh. That's tough. Looks like we'll have to go through comedies after all, doesn't it? Looks like it. Well, you better take a spell in camp. I'll ride over first thing in the morning and see the old man myself. Good night, boss. Well, see you later, Bill. Good night. Comedies, eh? Well, it's a long time since we've been through that country. Is that a big place? Nah, not as they go around here. But it's good country. You ought to take a look at it, Pete. Mm -hmm. One of the last of the old places. Just a bit of old England. My old man used to tell me about them. Pretty proud mob, too. Real strong on, uh, uh, tradition. Yeah, tradition. And this new Philly Kate Carmody, she's full of it. I wonder how that funny little blonde is down at Katrina. Oh, 
she was a beaut, that one. Well, good night to you, blokes. Good night. Crooks. A train of blonde. I wonder what sort of girl he'll finally marry. Marry? Why, the girl ain't been born that could get him to swap a feather bed for the open road. But what puzzles me is why he's going to Calvary's tomorrow. Who oh, was? Oh, uh, that's his story. To me, Bluey Duncan's feminine relations are a bit of a puzzle. Anyway, next morning he went riding off to the Carmody homestead. He seemed reluctant, yet curiously anxious. I wondered why. Bluey! Hello, Kate. How are you? I'm all right. I mean, I'm all right. It's a long time since you've been through our country. Well, I'm still droving. I need some water for my cattle. Oh, water for your cattle. That's why you came. I see. Wait a minute, Kate. Is there any reason why we can't meet like two sane people? I mean, I wouldn't have come through your country if I could have watered my cattle somewhere else. No? No. That is, uh, well, there's no need to look at me as if I had the plague. I'll get my business fixed up with your dad and push on. You can't. He's dead. Dead? Yes, three months ago. Terribly sorry, Kate. Why didn't you send for me? There was no need. I managed. You'd better talk to Stringy about your cattle. At dinner tonight. trouble with the cattle, boss. His horse fell and rolled on him. The rest of the boys are going to try and bring the mob along in the morning. That'll be all right. You'll learn. Oh, by the way, this is our new chum, Peter Linton, Kate Carmody. Hello. Well, I'm awfully sorry about this, but I always seem to be getting into a mess. A catastrophe has always happened together. Here's me with a sprained ankle and the old country at war. Has it happened? Haven't you heard about it? No. Yes. We got it from a bloke along the track. He heard about it three days ago on the radio. Oh, it's just as well it has, anyway. At least we know where we stand now. Yes, it is a bit of a relief. Still, I, I've got to get home to the old country now. I've got to be in this show somewhere. You stick with us, Pete, and you'll be in it quick enough. Yes, I could. I've come a long way to write about you, friends. I suppose we will be in it soon, boss. There's nothing sure of that. Then this is our last drove. You betcha sweet life it is. I wouldn't miss this for quids. Yes, Bluey will be in it. Never misses anything, do you? Just another paddock. A nice big one this time. Kate, you can't go on living here by yourself. I'm quite content. Oh, rubbish. Louie, would you please... Mind my own business, I know. Well, what right have you None. to... None. You cancelled that two years ago, didn't you? Because I painted a few places red along the south road. Kate, has it ever struck you that you're a bit mid-Victorian? I'm not interested in what you think about me. I stopped being interested two years ago. Oh, bit of a jag. Bit of a jag? What about that girl at Katrina Downs and the one at Augustella? What about that, Louie? What's so wrong about it? So wrong? But what do you expect when a man's been out for days and nights and weeks and months on a drove with nothing but curlews and howling dingoes 
gets to the stage where he starts to see a woman's face in the evening haze. Oh, don't look so shocked about it, Kate. Men are like that. Are they really like that, Bluey? Really? Well, we weren't married and you were miles away. Would have happened just the same after we were married, Bluey. You're that type of man. Unstable, wild. You'd never really belong to any one woman or any one place. New faces and new paddocks. Every new boundary line would make you want to hop over the fence. Just to see what was on the other side. All right, all right. You've got it all set. I'm not the marrying kind. Maybe you're right at that. I always did hate the thought of ties. Until I met you. And I used to think about you at night in the bush. The thought of you nearly drove me crazy. So I asked you to marry me. Oh, you were right to turn me down. You need a good, solid bloke. Someone that won't run amuck every full moon. But, Bluey, you didn't even ask me to forgive you. Come and sit over here. Do you really want to know why? I was afraid I'd do the same thing again. Oh, I love you, Kate. But not enough, Bluey. Could have locked me in the stable every full moon. It wouldn't work, Bluey. I know it wouldn't work. It's better this way. I think you're wrong, Kate. No, I'm sure I'm right. I'm sure. Bluey Duncan rode away and didn't once look back. But I felt that his assurance had been shattered for the first time. Weeks at the Carmody homestead where Kate nursed me in a kind, impersonal way. Then, reunion with Bluey and Myra. And with war upon us, I became an answer. In Libya, we were soon helping to make newspaper headlines.
could he possibly stay here? It's not all night enough. A cop in a bed, will you? It's like the top of a wedding cake. <laughs> That's not a bed. That's what Blurio flew to the channel. Well, what are we waiting for? Bring on the dancing girls. All things to my great content. And so to bed. Hey, don't do. What's you that? idiot, what do you think you're doing? It might have been a booby trap. Huh? Oh, <laughs> been no explosion so far. You know, this is the first thing I've seen that looks anything like Cleopatra since I came to this country. It's a step in the right direction, isn't it? <sighs> Mark Antony. Marky. Mark Antony. Or any good strong centurion will do. Well, there's nobody under there. Oh, uh, Phillips. See that I'm not disturbed for about six months, will you? Oh, have a look in here. Come on, get off your spine quick and put a picket on the place. You have the mob in here. Right. This is ours. Well, get the long fellow. There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than we ever dreamed of in our philosophy. Uh, I've been dreaming of that little packet for weeks, Peter. Yeah, the cup the blonde. Hmm? Where? What would all the paraphernalia? Too fat. I like them fat. You know, sort of. Oh. Hmm. How do you like them? Oh, I like them tall and dark. Short, fair, ginger. I like them. You like them? <laughs> Rugged type, sir. Would you like a dry martini, old boy? What? Clock to you. Oh! <laughs> Ooh, my fence is rank. It smells to heaven. But mind you, he that hath a beard is more than he is. And he that hath no beard is less than he is. Good Lord, I look like a wog. You smell like one. Oh, well, it's a little on the nose. But now, a bath. And a peg out, lads. Peg out, I feel this, you know. Yeah, up to see the lizard, the wonderful lizard of all. I'll tell you, I'll tell you. You see what I... I'll get back to that mare's house, remember? Who's in there? Too late, George, no seats vacant. I say, fellas, fellas. <coughs> 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 you don't get off my back, George. I've been carrying you long enough. Won't you let him in? Listen, <coughs> far be it from me to turn out to be an ear basher, but I'm trying to tell you fellas in a refined way well, open up there, chap. that there is a uh, abeltar at the uh, order. <laughs> Go on, let's have it. What are you men doing here? Oh, uh, we're just having a... Okay, okay, okay. What show are you from? Second, second. All right, we'll get your gear together and get out of here. Try and make it snappy, chaps. Oh, there, sir. And leave something for the bar, but too, don't start souveniring everything, will you? All right, don't wait. Chisel be sweet. Just follow you. Right. Hey. Well, it's all yours now. See what you can do with it, will you? Yours. 
decided to make you the hairdresser. Hairdresser. In charge of the salon. 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 I'm gonna be a pomade plasterer. A sense squirter. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> someone else. Barber. In charge of the salon. It's gonna be lovely, that is. <laughs> Japanese. <laughs> Might have known it. <clears throat> Chloe. Oh, Chloe. Fancy meeting you all the way out here. Oh, Chloe, after all this. I come thousands of miles over thousands of water and pick out a dump like this to fall into a water hole. Excuse me, Chloe. <laughs> Oi, unconscious, come here. Come in here and don't answer me back. <coughs> well, we want to clean the place up. You compris English? Miss Quise. You missed what twice? You, you what? Miss Quise offended. No, you can offend me. I, I got a skin like a horse. The main idea is we want to clean the place up. See, that's what we can possibly do, clean the place up. Miss Quise. I think you're going to be rather troublesome. Listen, my friend. You compris English? Miss Quise offended. I, you're not offending me. I'm just trying to have a talk to you. Listen, you compris, compris the chair, you know, the chair, you know. Camels are coming to rah, 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 the chair. Miss Quise offended. Listen, I want to be your friend. I want to help you. I'll slap you. Look, you compris uh, tup, tup. I know. Miss, Miss Quise, yeah, yeah, good, Miss Quise. You can't break Chloe. Oh, Chloe! Chloe! Why? 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 For heaven's sake, shut up, you fellas, and get to sleep, will you? Take get all you can. You'll be working like hell tomorrow. We were eager to get into action again, and it wasn't long before we did. One morning found us raking about the desert in a carrier. As part of a small patrol, alert for a lash at the enemy.
Can't you keep out of trouble for five minutes? A nasty one yourself there, son. You feel all right? All oh, right enough. Only I wish I'd have made me full quota. How many did you get? Oh, but a handful. And they went for their lives. There's bound to be a few more of them here somewhere. Better get cracking out of here. Come on, lad. Come on, matey. Hold up. Hey, fella. Come on, matey. We're sweet. Here comes the rest of the motor. last memory was the desert, of the hot sun and sand, and a fearful pain. But now a shadow was being withdrawn from my mind, slowly, and I saw, what? A mirror, surely, out of which there came the cool, oval face of a girl, like something from a dream. Sister. What do you want, soldier? Could I have a cigarette, please, sister? Yes. flower-like freshness about her that was full of ease just to contemplate. Her fingers were firm, deaf too. She looked most capable as she filled the glass, yet so feminine. I wish the medicine had been meant for me. So I contrived to be a little less robust than the occasion warranted. I say, sister. Yeah? Well, this is going to sound awfully silly, but... Shh! Well, wait the patient. Oh, yes. Whoever loved, but loved not at first sight. There. I don't understand. You don't understand? No. <laughs> Bill Shakespeare's left me down again, eh? <laughs> oh, I see. You and Bill Shakespeare. Shh. Wait, I say, sister. Look, don't go there. There's something radically wrong with me. What is it? Hmm? Oh, well, in the first place, my feet are very cold. Feet are cold? Yes, and I've got uh, pins and needles. Pins and needles? Yes, and, and palpitations. Palpitations? Goose pimples. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a wreck. I think we'll rare you. Now you try and sleep. All right. I say, your your name isn't Mary, is it? Yes, it is. How did you know? Well, I'm psychic. It, it had to be. That's all. It's my favourite name. 
your first name wouldn't be Don by any chance. Oh, no. As a matter of fact, it's Peter. Peter? Yes, you know. Saint Peter, the old gentleman that guards the gates of paradise, that's me. <laughs> Confidentially, St. Peter, if I should ever be there, would I need your pass to enter? No. You just say nurse to Brooke. I'll remember that. Bakshi, Bakshi, Bakshi. Well, I'll let you off with a cigarette. Oh, get off my back, will you? I'm my butt again. <laughs> Listen, what's the drill, Blake? Grease? Yes, we think so. The hull of the six deal? Well, it looks like it. Here's me sitting up like the Raja of Bong. I take a poor view of this being left behind. When Bluey and Peter hear about it, there's going to be trouble. Big trouble. They'll get so hoppin' mad. <laughs> Listen, it's come at last. I'm going to Greece. How did you, you manage it, George? Yeah. How did I manage it? Listen, the Major looked at me and he said, George, I feel you're wasted in the barber shop. You should be over in Greece with the boys, see? So he said, go and get your gear on and get down the line with the rest of the soldiers. <laughs> so I said to Bungie Wagra, Who? Bungie Wagra, that's the wog that helps me in the barber shop, ah. see? I said to him, carry on, fella. And here I am, all set. <laughs> You're going to Greece and we're left behind. Yeah. I know how you feel, son, but still, you, you know, it's just war. You've got to take it. Listen, don't let it get you down. Keep the old chin up. Remember the old saying, he who laughs, he who laughs, laughs, he who, uh, <laughs> he who laughs, well, anyhow, they all finish up laughing at the finish, you know. Ah, uh, I'll be thinking of you all the while, you know. Sorry to have you with me, but still, we can't all get the brakes. I'm one of the lucky. Right, Wallace. Right, Wallace. I'll get it for you, sir. I'm a kind of unofficial executive around here. Private. Now that's me, Private <laughs> Wallace. <laughs> what are you doing here? Well, well I would. I, 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 Just a minute. I'll tell you what you're doing. You've sneaked away from the barber shop. From the barber shop. You've been telling lies to these fellows that you're going to Greece. To this Greece. is the third time you try to get away with the boys. But, but, but the but, CO says it's the last time. If you try any more of these tricks, you'll get 14 days FP. FP. I'll give you two minutes to get back to the barber shop. <laughs> Always kidding. Always clown knack the guy. He doesn't really mean that, you know. Well, you'd better get back to the shop, son. You'll get yourself into trouble. Yeah. We're glad you're still with us anyway. Have some fun. Well, I had to go anyhow, didn't I? Yeah. You're all right, George. Oh. See you later, George. No, no, no. He's a nice little bloke, isn't he? He's a good tryer, and a Bonzo little chap. He's a good tryer, and he's a damn good book, too. Peter. Tom, you're in bed. All right, sister. Now, eyes off, blokes. Peter saw her first. You're slipping, bloke. How did Pete manage to get in before you? Oh, just a habit he has. Quite work of these English blokes, you know. Thank you. Listen, you know, sure. Yeah, yeah. Look at this floor. Oh, it's a nice bomb. Paper, cigarette, yeah. Yeah. What's this man doing so high in bed? Yeah. You know better than that. The usual locker and the usual display. Clear that and close the door. Well, you should be downstairs. Now, come along, boys. Break up the mess. You've been here far too long. Come along. I don't. Come along. Well, so, Peter. See you later. Don't do anything wrong. Come, my See you later. Be good. Come on. Yeah. Well, Lynn, you should be in bed, you know. And you should be in bed as well. Oh, but look, I've just got out of bed. I don't have to get into bed yet. Oh, right, all right. <laughs> 
No sooner has the 6th Division left for Greece with most of our heavy equipment when news is flashed of a new enemy offensive which hurls us into a frenzy of preparation. Minefields are laid, entanglements raised. Our 9th Division is forced back from the desert by an avalanche of armour under a new German commander who has smashed British positions beyond Benghazi. His name is Rommel. As the 9th comes in, we know how grim is the hour, how desperate must be our defence. Bountiful is the Nazi harvest, falling to the keen edge of his scythe. A red line of wounded flows in, overwhelming our tiny hospital and its heroic staff. Now, you know the urgency of our position. We have fallen back here to Tobruk, with little in the way of guns, practically no transport, six planes in the sky and a division and a half of men. In a matter of days, even hours, Tobruk will be attacked by the full weight of Rommel's panzers, who are going to come to us on the flood tide of a victory which has swept through Europe. Just when they will come depends upon the stand now being made by the 2nd Armoured Division at Michelle. The Germans will attack with great numbers of tanks. We have nothing to fight the tanks with out in the front perimeter lines. But has it ever occurred to you what would happen if our infantry did not attempt to attack the tanks, but let them come through? Let them come through, sir? Yes. The tanks, then lulled by a sense of false security, would keep on coming right to our concealed artillery. But let us forget these overrated tanks and concentrate on our real menace, the German infantry, who will come in hordes. Now let us look at our first line of defense, the perimeter line. These concrete firing posts stretch in an arc for 32 miles, eight miles out from Tobruk. Each post will have to be held by only 10 to 15 Australians, instead of 50 as the Italians used. And we can supplement their supply of weapons with those captured from the enemy. For the safety of Egypt, it is our job to hold Tobruk for two months. There will be no surrender and no retreat. It must be impressed upon every man that no matter what his job may be, a cook, a batman or a mechanic, that first and foremost he is a fighting man and that if the enemy should break through, no man is to yield one yard. Remember, with a division and a half, we will have to stand up to seven and a half Axis divisions. And there is nothing between us and the Suez Canal except one brigade of infantry at Mirza Matru. Well, we can only hope that the 2nd Armoured Division at Michele can hold out long enough for us to complete our defences. Michele has fallen. Bradley, have arrangements been made to remove the nurses? Yes, sir. Good. That will be all, gentlemen. You'll receive my instructions later. I made it. Thank God you're getting out of this. Oh, Peter, I don't want to go out. I don't want to go. Here, yeah, come on, Chip. It's all right. We, we'll meet each other as soon as I get out of this place. Oh, will we, Peter? Will we? Yes, we will. Tell me, what sort of hats do you wear in City Street? Small ones. Good. Will you wear a little blue one just over that eye when we meet again? I will. <laughs> we'll go to tea. I know a place in Surrey. Where... Come on, sister. Hurry, sister, please. Let me look at you. Oh, go on, you. Better go.
Easter Sunday. It came like any other day. The enemy was near, but so was God. And in scattered bands, we knelt and worshipped him, regardless of church or creed. felt we were the old hands, waited before the dawn of the ninth. It was their first big show. those tanks unless the hands are visible. Look, look, look. Like a nine pin. Take him off.
Oh, the hell with the tanks. Look, there's something happening on our front. Here they come. Jerry infantry, 500 yards away. here is very serious. No, sir. We've sent a runner down to number eight post to ask for reinforcements.
Hey, Milo, I'm checking up on my fellows. Have you seen Robbie? Yeah. Copland, out by the wire. Has anybody seen Tilroy? Tilroy. Listen, there any migration here? Yeah, Pete. Snowy Durham is, aren't we? Oh, good. I, I'm looking for Mason and Sorty Walls and Tilroy. Snowy. No. Listen, Snowy, wake up. Yes. Have you seen uh, Mason or, or, or Sorty Walls, anyway? No, I haven't seen Mason. Shorty, they, they took Shorty the other way. All right, Peter. Thanks, sir. Well, sir, everything worked out as we planned. The tanks broke through, but our infantry held its ground. Our artillery accounted for 17 German tanks. Over 100 dead and 200 prisoners have been picked up in one of our forward areas. It's been a grand show, sir. The first time the Blitzkrieg has really failed. Yes, but don't let us be over-optimistic. They'll keep coming on the land and in the sky, and they'll use every possible means to break the morale of our men. We're not used to sitting in holes. We can't afford to relax for a minute. This is Germany calling. This is Germany calling. Bremen, Hamburg, Luxembourg on the 16, 19, 25 meter band. Calling the Tobruk garrison. I'm now handing over to your well-known English commentator. Hello, Tobruk. Are you still digging into the ground like rats? What a pity you have no planes. <laughs> we'll send you some tomorrow. I've told your people back home all about you. That you're already 30 feet below the ground and frantically digging deeper. Even in your catacombs, there'll not be enough room to die. <laughs> Don't you know that the battle is beyond your puny efforts? Your position is hopeless. You're outnumbered, without planes and with no chance of relief. For England is being driven from the Mediterranean and leaving you to be ruthlessly sacrificed. Do you enjoy living like rats? Why don't you come out of your holes and fight on the right side? Think of your future, rats. What can you hope to gain by hanging on? A mere handful of deluded colonials. You poor fools. The world will know you as the rats of Tobruk. You ignominious sons of sheep herders. You are just a mere handful, do you hear me? Just a mere handful. You're not enough. Not enough. We are enough. We are enough to do our country loss. And if to live, the fewer men, the greater share of honor. He that outlives this day and comes safe home will stand a tiptoe when his day is named. Then shall he strip his sleeve and show his scar. Old men forget, yet all shall be forgot, but he'll remember with advantage what feats he did this day. Then shall our names, familiar in their mouth as household words, Harry the King, Bedford, Exeter, Warwick, Tolbert, Salisbury and Gloucester, be in their flowing cups freshly removed. And this day shall ne'er go by from this day to the ending of the world, but we, in it, shall be remembered. We few. We happy few. We band of brothers. Only at dawn and evening can we emerge from our holes in the ground to stretch cramped limbs shake free from our blankets a few of our lesser but still tenacious enemies or care for the weapons that serve us so well in battle we have a little time to be ourselves 
talk to comrades and smoke a borrowed fag or two. But Jerry never leaves us alone for very long. Over come his shells, driving us to the darkness of the earth again. Come from, too. Where have I come from? Where have I been? I've been everywhere. I've been everywhere. I've been all over Palestine. I've been all over Egypt. I can't find the people I'm looking for. Why are holes? There's more holes around here than there is in the Sid. And I've been in every one of them twice. Can you find, tell me where my, the, the, the Northumberland Fusiliers are? Yeah, that's your number one. I'm, I'm looking for the Northumberland. I'm looking for the Northumberland Mr. Fleet. I, I don't think I know what I'm looking for myself. Hey, Pete, you're a bit of an interpreter. Get on to this, will you? What are you looking for, Scotty? The Northumberland Fusiliers. I've been all over Palestine looking for them. I can't find them. The Northumberland Fusiliers. These fellas think I've you're got... You're from them. Glasgow, aren't you? Uh, aye. But they... What did you say? I said you're from Glasgow, aren't you? Uh, yes, yes. You know Lord's Bar? Do, do, I know, do I know Lord's Bar? He's, he's, he's asking me, do I know Lord's Bar? Do I know Lord's Bar? I used to live in it. I, I had to go home now and again, but do I know Lord's Bar? Do you know Lord's yes, Bar? Yes, I said. Oh, God! <laughs> no, wait, wait, wait. Don't move. Don't move. What's the matter? Wait a minute. Wait, wait. What's the matter? Oh, hold on. Hey, that's a... Yeah, you do them. You nearly throw them. Throw on what? On the bed, Robbie. It's on. You stay there where you are. You're all right, don't you? Yeah, oh, you little fool. You, you, you. Now stop where you are, will you? Try and stop where you put. It's on. Yeah. Now move, don't move. There you are. He's right. What do you got there, Scotty? There's a Robin, the bird. What do you call him, Robbie, for? Oh, that's that's after Robbie Burton. <laughs> yeah. It's a nice colour, Scotty. Yeah. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> You know, these, these fellas think I'm a little bit haywire. But maybe I'm not as silly as I look. You couldn't be. No. You know, most people have got something that they cling to. Something to break the tension. I've got a little Robbie here. You know, when things are tough and tension's high, a little laugh. Bang. Bang goes everything. Bang goes tension. You get the idea? I had him once. I had a little Robbie, you know. I've got a photo. I'll show you. And you know where I got this one? Yeah, where? Well, I got it in Lauder's Bar. <laughs> he used to get... Oh, that, that, that's the wife. Yeah. Every time I used to get it, he used to whistle. But then when I left, I gave that's it. very nice, Scotty. Oh, I haven't got the photo here. Well, it's in my tunic. This is a new well. issue. I'll show you the first time I catch up on you. Great, stand still. Stand still, fellas. Come on, Johnny, get your feet under you. All right, Charlie. You know what? Any idea where they are? You can't catch such crowd at all. Said to be a bunch, bunch of racers coming. Oh, what a mess! What a noisy mess! Why? Why, you fellas? You know what? Any idea where I could, where I could find the, the Northumberland people here? Yes, I've been searching not everywhere. You know, yes. You see that old pip over there, just slightly over to the left? Yes. Well, now, if you were to go out there and then turn about half right... Yes. ...and follow the track there for about half a mile, you'll find them out there. They're there, are they? Yes, you'll oh, find them out there. Hey, but you've got to go now, fella. You'll get your head blown off. Oh, I've got to go, you see. I'm a company runner, and I've got a very, very important message for them, and I must get there. Thank you very much. I'll see you. I'll keep them up down. I'll show you the bud when I get by. Hello. With other units, we would be rested near the town to savour that unaccustomed luxury of walking above ground for any length of time. We think as we line up and march off how much this means to us, little realising that German bombers went to fiendish ends to sustain our tension. There's not very much to look at in the town, but we attempt to sightsee. We stop to read the Tobruk Truth. To us, the Dinkum Oil. Written and printed by a band of soldier journalists whose defiant slogan was, Our paper always appears.
Uh, just a minute, my man. Yes, <laughs> it's rather interesting. Uh, oh, there's more. You haven't seen anything like this knocking around, have you? Well, <laughs> that's <laughs> mostly Italian propaganda, sir. <laughs> that, uh, that's right. They tell me you have a bold brush hand, my man. Something like a Van Dyke or a Rubens. Thank you very much, sir. Well, I just don't want to boom myself up, but I do slow I say it myself. My downward swish is terrific. Do you know that? I'll get some more lava. I think you'd lava have some, some lava. He's asleep. You know what, fellas? He's worn to a frazzle. He's fought himself to a standstill. That's what's up with him. Now, listen, fellas, I'll tell you what we do. You bet all them she out of him. Let him have a rest for a while, you know. A few hours, he'll be all right. I'll look after him. Him, she, fellas. Come on, don't. Shh. Don't make a noise. Shh.
Come here, Peter. Are you giving up the game? You know any new tunes at all? Oh, Still the same old ones, eh? Good old good ones. Didn't you get me? No. Well, I might share this one with you. I wonder who it's from. You're good at getting them. And you got to answer them again? Stone the crows. This woman gets me hopping mad. Oh, what's the matter? Oh, it's that little cook from Augustella again. <laughs> she keeps on writing mad love letters at me. Listen to this. Hmm? Without you, everything is dark and dreary. The clouds gather and the sky is dull. That's not a love letter, old boy. That's a weather report. <laughs> hey, Whiskey, I got another lad mad letter from Walker Fella. Think they're gonna have some rain. Oh, it's from Kate Carmody. I, I don't know why she writes to me, unless she means it for the both of us. Why shouldn't she write to you? Hello, she says it's a photo. You know, she's a really beautiful girl. She brings a scent of the big guns and the blue skies. You have a look at her, Blue. Don't you think there's something strange, elusive about her? Like the mountain country she comes from. You have a look at those eyes. I don't have to look at them to remember. Well, good luck to you both, Peter. Well, good luck to us. <laughs> you mean Kate? <laughs> Don't be silly, old boy. Frankly, I'm not her type. Uh, the man that marries her will have to ride faster than she can, shoot faster than she can, pace her across the plains, be first across the flooded creeks. First. That's her man. Mind you, if I were your type, I'd probably be... Uh, you're not the marrying kind. I know. <clears throat> yes, you know. Who's the girl? Hmm? Oh, that's uh, Kate Carmody. What a butler. Have a look at that, Joe. What a what? I'll say, Laurie, she's the grouse. Whoa, whack go! What a beauty! Hey, fellas, out this a bit of a How about her for a mascot? Not a bad beauty! Hey, come on, don't you? I think I want it too. What you say, no more? Katie! 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 What's that thing? Mary, propriety, society, they say money. Her name was Mary, Mary, long before the fashion came. And Mary sang the thing After weeks in the town, we move back to the perimeter lines and the desert catacombs. We spent nights in no man's land where we crawled on our stomach like snakes across sand or else rested exhausted in the steaming heat that drains strength from minds and bodies, plagued by flies and thirst. Small things retained our sanity, like trimming our weapons for battle at night. And here, in these shaking caverns, we endured all the explosive raids that the Nazis can hurl at us. 
until sometimes the sound of bombs burst the mind and reason cracked beyond a man's restraint, till nothing seemed left to us but bombs, bombs, bombs. Stop it! Don't you make him stop it! Bill, stop it. Thank you there. Bill, why don't you say a prayer? I've tried, I, I've tried. I've tried too, and I know it works. Oh, it doesn't, it doesn't. Bill, our father. Say it, our father. Our father. Which art in heaven. Which art in heaven. Our father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. And as men pray for strength in the church of St. Nicholas, a heavenly figure stands in protective benediction over a town which will not fall. I feel I must write a few letters tonight. That damn candle's getting on my nerves, you know. Keeps on sticking its head up to get it knocked off and then lying down and dying. Well, there's it. No. Not yet. Uh, I want to finish the letter. <clears throat> Who is it this time? Mary or Kate? I guess you never write to them both in the one day. I suppose that would be considered bad form, would it? Now, that's, uh, that's, uh, caution. Caution, yeah, that's what it is. He's a shrewdy, that bloke. Shifty on bloke, will you, George? Oh, by the way, I sent your affectionate thoughts to Kate. Uh, hope you don't mind. You cut that sort of stuff out. I didn't ask you to. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I, I'll uh, open up the letter and, and cross it out, if you like. I need to go that far. It doesn't make that much difference. According to our report, there's approximately an enemy platoon in position with three LMGs around a disused gun. At map reference, 454-454-547. Which is 2,700 paces on a bearing 176 degrees from the central pit. Hey, Pete, your candle's out. Yes, I noticed that. Did you get that, Pete? Yes, sir. We will destroy this enemy post and take prisoners. Now, each man is to take the following. 100 rounds, two grenades, there'll be two brands, three tommies, 20 pounds of jelly plugs, 50 feet of fuse, and three ST grenades.
Charlie with me. Charlie! I can't do anything more until the trucks arrive. How are you, Pete? I'm um, warm. Well, You'll be all right soon. Heading straight for Surrey. Surrey. That's a lovely spot. It's green. That's my home. And... Come on, son. Try and keep quiet. Bluey, will you take this? It's my diary. I want you to finish it. Finish it for me, will you? There's some poems in it. They're not very good. Not very good. I always wanted to be a poet. Me and Brooke. <laughs> Funny. If I should die, think only this of me. You don't know that. That there's some corner of a foreign field that is forever England. Yes, and there shall be. In that rich earth, a richer dust concealed, a dust whom England bore, shaped, made aware, gave once her flowers to love, her ways to roam, a body of England's, breathing English. Pete. Pete! No, he's all right. He's got to be. Get the doctor back. Pete, hang on, old mate. The doctor's coming back. Oh, Pete, just hang on. No, Milo. It's too late. He's gone. Sergeant Duncan? Sergeant Duncan. The company headquarters. Please explain why your return of reserve rations and water is not at this headquarters by 0600 hours. You comrade fellas. Listen, I've got some good news for you. They reckon we've been evacuated. In fact, they're on the move down there now. Well, so long, fellas. Relieved by British and Polish troops, the 9th Division, scarred but unconquered, go from the sea their 281 days ordeal. Back to their homeland now, to march in triumph, for they were heroes, line on line, a thrilling conquering company. The ninth was home. And this was their reward, straight from the hearts of their countrymen in a fever of acclaim. But their job was not yet done. Danger from the north threatens the homeland. So they exchange the shouting city streets for steaming silent swamp. And there begins their final purgatory. Forgotten is the rigor of the desert fight in this new horror of New Guinea. Mud, mud, never ending mud.
cradled in the campfire of the Australian bush, the call of mateship brings Milo back to help his friend. And in this fashion did many like these two, wounded, bloodied, lost, stagger on along unknown trails to find their comrades. Desert could not kill them, nor German, nor Jap, for they would not be killed. They would not be defeated. Reckon when a bloke sees a sight like this, he's one step nearer heaven. Milo, come on, mate. You're all right. You pulled this before, remember? For keeps this time. For keeps. You've killed him. You've killed him. You've killed him. You've killed him. All right. Why don't you come out and fight, you dirty, rotten dingo?
going to kill me. Got to get back. Got to tell Kate. Those letters to Peter. They were for me. All of them. Mine. 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 That's my photo. Leave it alone. Stop that tune. Stop, stop, stop. Victorian, been Victorian, but all I want in God's earth, Kate, Kate. come to you on a hilltop with the wind in your hair. I've seen you standing like this on the desert and through the mud. Just the thought of you kept me sane. Oh, Bluey, I've wanted you to come back so much for so long. Will you, Kate, take this man, Bluey Donkin, for your husband? I will. 